guys and welcome to my AP experience video. So in today's video, I'll just be talking about my AP experience. This was requested by a subscriber because I made a similar video to this, but I did my IB experience and talked about if I thought IB was worth it and how that went. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out here. I'll link it and then I'll also put it down in the description below. But basically today, I'm just going to talk about my AP experience. Um, so I'll talk about my classes, the tests I took, how the test is formatted, how I paired AP with IB and then how AP translates to college credits and then I'll kind of just talk about if I think it's worth it or not um, at the end of the video. Before we get into it, my name's Melanie and I make vlog videos about my time in college. Sometimes they're advice videos, sometimes they're just vlogs of me living the college life and it really will just show you the insight to what college students do. So if that sounds interesting, you should definitely subscribe to my channel and Stay tuned for more videos. I'm also running a giveaway right now, and that is on my channel, and it ends on July 25th, so make sure you go and check that out to see what you win and how to enter. But yeah, let's get into it. So to get started, I'll begin with my classes. I took AP Human Geography freshman year, AP Government sophomore year, AP Spanish sophomore year, AP Economics junior year, and AP Psychology senior year. Um, and since I was in IB, that's the reason I didn't take more AP tests. So the majority of my schedule was full of IB classes since I was taking six IB tests. And these were classes that I just used to supplement that. The main reason that I took AP classes was just so that my rank and my GPA would stay competitive because at my school, AP and IB classes were on a 5.0 grading scale. Whereas if I took a regular class, it would be on a 4.0 grading scale and my GPA was higher than a 4.0 and if you're interested in hearing more about like how I did in school and just generally how I got into Notre Dame I'll link that video here and put that in the description as well I kind of go into all of this in that video but I just wanted my rank and my GPA to stay competitive so I knew that I had to take AP classes whenever necessary to supplement my IB classes so that I could stay ahead so that is what I did um, the majority of the classes I took were mostly for requirements for my Texas high school diploma. So AP Human Geo, Government, and Econ, those are all required classes because it's a social studies, government, and economics. Those are all required to get your diploma in Texas, so that is why I took those. And then psychology I took as an elective across from TOK because I just needed a one semester class to take and psychology was one semester at my school. And Spanish I took in order to not take a gap year between my IB test and my Spanish 3 credit because I did Spanish in middle school so I was a little bit ahead. But those are the classes that I took. Now moving on to tests. Um, okay, well before I start about tests. I did not take every test for every class that I was in so I did not take the psychology or the econ test and that was just because econ I just wasn't that into and I didn't have a very strong classroom foundation for it and it wasn't a subject that necessarily interests me so I didn't really want to have to study for it on my own and then psychology I took that spring semester of senior year so I was already going to be taking five IB tests and I didn't really want to pile on anymore so that's why I didn't take psych and also it doesn't it's not really relevant to the major that I had decided I wanted to go into so it just wasn't worthwhile for me um but now the tests that I did take freshman year I took AP Human Geo sophomore year I took AP Government and AP Spanish Lang and then junior year I took AP Spanish Lang again and AP English Lang um, so I think taking an AP test freshman year was definitely really helpful for me because it was able to show me what taking a collegiate level test was like, how well I could do with a classroom foundation versus self-studying, and it kind of just gave me an idea of what I needed to be successful for my test in the future, and it was really good practice. Human Geo is one of the easier AP tests. Um, so it definitely wasn't very hard and it isn't really a subject that I'm super passionate about so it was a good like get your feet wet kind of test just to, like see how everything was gonna work out for me during high school and what kind of tests I was really into um, sophomore year I took AP government and AP Spanish Lang so sophomore year was the first year I took Spanish 
four and that was a class that was completely in Spanish um, and I learned the most in that class so I really wanted to take the AP test to see how well I could do on a Spanish on a Spanish test because the following year I would be taking my Spanish IB test so sophomore year I mostly took Spanish just as a practice test but then I ended up doing well so it really brought up my confidence levels and it was good practice for me testing in Spanish because I had never done that before. AP government, I just took that because I was in government and sophomore year I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I've always considered being a lawyer. Like that's always kind of like something that I've had interest in since I was younger. So I was like, I'll take the government test. Like that applies to law. But I did not have a strong classroom foundation at all. So that definitely taught me um, if I wasn't going to learn it in class, I needed to teach it to myself because just a vague understanding was definitely not going to be good enough for me personally, just my learning style. So taking that definitely taught me that and it was a good learning experience. Um, junior year, I took AP Spanish Lang again and AP English. So I took AP English without taking the AP English class. I wasn't IB English at that point, but they're two vastly different curriculums. So my IB English teacher was also the AP teacher and she would just have study review sessions for us during lunch about a month out to the test. So those were helpful and I did well on that test, but also I'm a good writer and English was definitely one of my strong suits. So that class, I didn't necessarily need a strong classroom foundation or a strong self-study foundation. I could do well, like, regardless, because it's just something that I'm better at, because I've been speaking English my whole life, and I've had teachers who have taught me how to be a good writer, and it's also something I'm just, like, kind of naturally good at, so that worked out well for me. Um, and then I took Spanish again, and that is because... I got a three the first time, which was really good because I'm not a native Spanish speaker. I had never taken a class completely in Spanish before, um, and uh, I had never tested in Spanish. So that was really good for me to get my sophomore year. So my junior year, I wanted to do better because I felt like I had more of an understanding of Spanish. I was getting a lot more confident in my capabilities. So I took it again, and I got a four Spanish in I got a four on that test. And then junior year, I also was taking my IB test. So it was really no point in me taking them both because I got a six on the IB test. Um, so like both of those are college credit. So it doesn't really matter that I took both, but I just did it kind of because I wanted to see how much I could improve. And then also just as a backup option in case I didn't do as well on the IB test. Cause in my opinion, IB tests are a little bit harder than AP tests just because it's so writing focused. And, yeah, I just personally think they're harder. So I took it as kind of a backup to that also. And English, too, I also took that as an IB test. So there, was real, there was no real purpose for me to take it as an AP test besides just being kind of like a backup. Um, but, yeah, so those are the tests that I took, and those are the reasons I took them, how I felt about them, etc. Now, the formatting of the test is half multiple choice, half writing. In my opinion, it's definitely nice because the multiple choice questions, some of them are obviously really specific, and you do have to know, like, what you're learning about pretty well, but they are not impossible. Like, they're, as long as you know what you're talking about, like, you'll understand the multiple choice questions and be able to do well. Um... So that part I didn't think was that difficult. And then the writing also, it's pretty short writing. You're not writing long essays or anything. So that part also wasn't very difficult. Um, so overall, I think the tests, as long as you have a good understanding of the class, really are not that hard. So they're definitely worthwhile to take because you can get college credit for them. And it's a lot cheaper than a college class. Also, when you take... Um, a language test you have to do a speaking portion so for Spanish I did a speaking portion on my AP test that is kind of stressful I'm gonna be honest because the way my district does it or at least my high school did it um, we all like would go to portables to take our IB or our AP test sorry um, we would all go to portables and take our AP test so they'd split us up probably like 30 kids into a portable and when you take the AP Spanish test they just play a recording at the beginning of the room and you do like a phone call conversation and you have a little recorder and you have to record yourself so I don't know that was just kind of stressful because there's people talking around you so if you have a hard time like really zoning in and focusing that can be really difficult which for me personally like if I'm stressed out about something and it's like not going well for me and like with all the voices like going around I just get like more stressed so the first AP test that was definitely something I think that brought me down because I was just like there was just so much going on around me it was hard to focus but the second AP test we did a lot more practice 
like phone calls in class so that I was more prepared for that section so I think that definitely really helped boost me up so if you're taking a Spanish test or any other foreign language where you have to speak definitely practice those before going in and make sure like you can do it without like being distracted by outside noise so yeah, that's how I feel about that. But now kind of moving into how AP translates to college credit. So it's basically the same as IB where you have to get either a four or five. So you have to have a very high score on the test. Some colleges will take a three and, uh, but you just kind of have to check on what college you're going to and see how they feel about that. But then you can get AP credit. So you get college credit for it. Um, if you're going to a public school, I would definitely recommend taking AP tests. So a public university because those will help you advance your credits so that you can be an upperclassman faster so for example you could go into college being a sophomore instead of being a freshman um which is definitely really helpful because it'll save you a lot of money in the long run so if you're going to a public school definitely look into that if you're going to a private school i would say ap tests are good but I mean they're not like amazingly helpful so for example um I took mm, none of my AP tests really cancel anything out for the credits that I took well I guess I could use English so for example I took AP English and I got a score that would allow me to get college credit for that at Notre Dame but Notre Dame has a core curriculum so I will still have to take a writing intensive course such as the English Lang at my time at Notre Dame but since I took the English Lang I just can't take the entry level so basically when you go to Notre Dame you have to take writing and rhetoric and then you have to take a writing intensive course you have to take both of those so since I took English Lang I don't have to take writing and rhetoric but I still have to take that writing intensive course because English classes are a part of our core curriculum so if you're going to a private university like you can get elective credits for it but it doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, if I take all the AP math tests, like stats and calc, I'll never have to take a math test again. Like we have a core curriculum, so you do have to take a math while you're there, if that makes sense. So I think they're useful for private universities if you like want to get ahead in what classes you can start at, but it won't necessarily advance you to a new um, like class level and it also won't just cancel things out where you don't have to take them so yeah but something that i also wanted to mention i have never taken dual credit classes but if you are going to an in-state public university i think you should definitely look into dual credit classes because i know for in the state of texas if you take dual credit in high school you don't have to pay for a test and they transfer as college credits so as long as you do well in those classes you don't pay for a test and you get college credits so I would definitely look into that. I don't know how it works in other states, but in Texas, as long as you take it and it's a public school, they have to accept them as college credits. So definitely look into dual credit, but I never did that, so I can't really speak to it. Overall, I would say I definitely recommend taking AP classes, especially if you're taking IB classes, I would recommend supplementing them with AP classes because it's a different learning style, different testing style, which is good experience to have, and it also helps your rank and helps show that you can take a rigorous course load if you're looking to get into a really good school. If you don't have IB, I would recommend taking a lot of AP classes because you want to show that you can handle a rigorous workload, and so you'll have to do that by putting a lot of AP classes in your schedule so yeah in the end I would definitely recommend AP I think it's a good learning experience and it's good to show that you have a rigorous course load and you can handle that so it'll help you get into a good college and if you're even not even looking to get into a super competitive school it'll help you in the long run because you'll be able to get credits for those AP tests that you take um so yeah, I think that's all for my AP experiences. If you have any questions, you can comment them down below. And yeah, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That definitely really helps support my channel. Um, and yeah, don't forget to enter my giveaway also because that's still going on. I think in the future I'm going to make a AP compared to IB. Like just comparing, contrasting, and like saying which one I think is like most helpful. Stuff like that. I might make a video like that. And then I'm going to have a couple more... Notre Dame freshman advice videos coming out soon so definitely stay tuned for those but that's all for today so bye